If you run regularly, the chances are that at some point in your running career, you've experienced pain within your shin, within your calf, your ankle, or your foot. Or if you're really unfortunate, all of them at the same time. This video, we're gonna explore why that happens to runners and what can we do to prevent it, but also to improve our running performance. If you've watched my plyometrics videos, you'll understand what I mean by kinetic energy or stored energy within the tendons. So we're gonna to look to improve that and we're also gonna to look to improve our mobility around the ankle joint and also the strength and conditioning within it. It's gonna be very, very simple exercises, very limited equipment needed, stuff that you can do at home and stuff that you should be doing quite regularly alongside your running. Now before we get going, it's important to understand the anatomy. Now bear with me on this because whilst you don't need to know the individual muscles, seeing how the lower leg, ankle and foot work so closely together might help to improve your running gait and prevent these injuries. In effect, we have anterior muscles, or muscles at the front, which dorsiflex the foot or the ankle and bring it back up towards us, and we have muscles at the back, which work to plantiflex or point the toes away from us. These same muscles also invert and evert the ankle and control movement of the toes and support arch height of the foot. Due to the high load going through all of these muscles when we run, it is so important that each is working properly, and therefore we need to isolate each muscle to be able to mobilise it and strengthen it. If we do not use our foot or toes properly when running, muscle imbalances begin to occur, which can lead to injuries such as shin splints, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, perineal tendonitis, or even stress fractures, all terms with which I'm sure most runners are familiar with. So these next movements are really going to focus on these muscles and getting us to use our foot and our toes properly when we run. So to mobilise these muscles, we know that we need to be working the ankle and also the foot. So to start with, we just want to get a little bit of a stretch into them. So the downward dog is a really nice position for this because we get really nice movements into the toes as well as the ankle. So into downward dog and just rotating through and we should feel this lower down than we would normally feel the calf. So if you're just doing a calf stretch, you feel it high up in here. When we're doing this, we should feel it a little bit lower into these muscles down here. It should feel like quite a deep stretch as well as we're hitting the deep muscles, not those superficial muscles. We can also come upright and into this position. And again, we're feeling this lower down. We're not feeling it up high and superficial like that one. So just rock back and you should feel the difference in doing these. Spend quite a long time doing this. This should be something that runners are doing regularly. So just keeping them nice and mobile, getting a nice stretch into them. So again, go into the normal calf stretch and then come down and feel the difference. It goes lower in the leg and you feel it a little bit deeper as well. So spend a couple of minutes on both legs, just getting them nice and loose. You can do both movements or you can stick to one if you prefer it. The next couple of movements, we're gonna to start to add a plyometric element to it. So we're really trying to get that elasticity within the tendons and the firing of the muscles. So for this, you can use your stairs or you can use uh, a chair or the wall. All we're gonna do is go into a very similar to position that we just were when we were stretching it. And we really wanna dig our toes in and start to feel it stretch. From there, you wanna put all of your weight onto that back leg and then really, really gently, you just wanna drive up with the toes and then come back down. And then again, nice and slowly. So keep the toes digged in and really pushing up with that big toe. So feel that stretch quite hard on the Achilles and then those deep muscles lower in the leg. And then again, push up and then back down. Nice and slowly back down and explosive on the way up. If you feel quite confident with that or quite strong with that, you can add that into a complete jump. So toe is gonna to come off the floor, but we wanna land in the same position. So again, front foot up and then jump and back down. Not a huge jump, especially if you're new to this, because that's quite a lot of stress going through the joint. The nice thing about this is that we're in quite a lot of dorsiflexion before we're taking off. So if we were to be running from this position, we're not getting that huge amount of dorsiflexion. So you'll feel it's a lot more extreme, but the muscle is becoming more mobile because of it. Swap over, make sure we're tackling both legs doing this. You might find that one is tighter than the other. If you are struggling with a leg, I wouldn't add the plyo element or the jump element straight away. So you just wanna be in this position and shooting it up. It might feel quite uncomfortable when you start, as long as you're happy with the amount of pain that you're in, that's fine and just nice and gentle to start with. And then once you're comfortable with it and doing it a while and feel quite strong, add in that jump. Make sure you land in nicely on your toe and really exaggerate that toe drive. 
The next movement we're going to do is very similar, but this replicates running a little bit more. So we need a little step up and then again on a soft surface, still with my shoes off because I want to use my toe and my foot. All I'm going to do is have my foot relaxed on the floor and I'm just going to gradually take my body weight forward as if I was running or walking. And then I'm just going to really emphasize again that toe drive and I'm going to jump up onto the box. I'll make sure that my toe is the last thing to, lose, to leave the floor. So if you watch nice and slowly what my foot does, so as my body weight it comes forward I'm staying in with my toe and really driving up from there so I'm not trying to drive up with the ball on my foot or nice and flat footed I'm really getting that toe in this is quite nice because my toe is leaving a mat a mark in the mat so if you have got a yoga mat at home really focus on digging your toe into the mat and driving up so again as my body weight comes forward in with the toe and up and if I look back down now there's a big indent to where my toe is do this on both, and again, if you have a sore side, try and focus on that side, but make sure you're doing it on both because it will improve your running gait and your performance. So with my right foot, digging that toe in, body weight slowly forward and driving up. Try and focus on a nice solid landing as well, because obviously when we're running, that's going to be the progression into the... The last movement we're going to do involves my favourite bit of equipment, which is the wobble cushion. These are in a lot of my videos because they are brilliant for ankle stability and knee stability. All we're going to do, normally, you would stand bang on the middle of the wobble cushion, try and find your balance and do exercises from there. In this case, we're trying to work on the inversion and the eversion. So what I'm going to do to start with is place my right foot slightly off centre, so slightly to the right to start with. By doing this, naturally, my foot is going to invert. So the sole of my foot is pointing in towards the side. So just slightly off to the centre, and then I'm just going to stand and find my balance there. So I'm working outside of my, outside of my leg quite hard here. So I'm trying to correct that, bring it back to normal. I can feel that all the way down the outside of my leg. I also then want to stand again with my right foot, but this time slightly off center to the left or more medial to my body and do the same thing. So this is forcing me into eversion. So my soul is trying to point outwards and I'm having to correct to try and bring that back in. And I'm, all I'm going to do is just try and find my balance on the cushion using each side of my leg. And then swap over and do the same on your left. So again, start with my left leg slightly towards the outside of my body. Forcing me into inversion. And then I'm going to go slightly more medial. Forcing me into eversion. And I'm just trying to keep correcting and find my balance on the cushion. Really, really important to work on the inversion, eversion, and dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So with the mobility and with the strengthening as well. Give that video a go at home. In terms of reps, you want to be trying to do quite high reps. So it's all body weight, so not a massive amount of force each time, but we're really trying to replicate going for a longer run where there's lots of repetitions going through the ankle and the foot joint. Hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it really, really helps. And do try and give those a go at home because they will massively help your running. They'll stop your calves from hurting and they'll also prevent, uh, help you run faster.